What's up, baby? What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It feels so good to be back home, except for one thing. I miss all my people. I miss having all of those people that came together. That was one hell of a ride, seriously. One hell of a ride hanging with Randy and Corey and Brian, Mark Torres and Joyce, with his kids, with da 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 da, damn Gina, Michael. Gina's kids, Gina's, Gina's daughter, Brillen, and Tyler, and all of the Morrisons, and all of them, and Angela. That was a great thing. It's great to be home. But all the chaos and everything that was going on, and everybody being singularly focused on a goal that was impossible. Literally, I said a couple times, it's the fourth quarter. It's a two-minute warning. We're down by six, and we got to get a touchdown. We scored. I'm just thinking, I was watching the season finale of The Flight Attendant with the wife. You know, takes the time with it just being her and me here for Father's Day. We've been watching the series and stuff and they missed the last episode, which has been weeks ago. And it reminded me of Fatal Attraction. You know, in Fatal Attraction, Glenn Close is, you know, at them with the ah, knife and stuff. And he, he gets her and she, Falls in the water, you see the bubbles go out. And they think that she's dead. And then all of a sudden she raises up and, you know, again. I'm wondering is it possible? Is it possible that the Cowboys, that's a silly season now, don't shoot the messenger. This is silly season. we got five weeks of time before training camp opens up, and everybody's coming up with their all kinds of theories, you know, players that should be traded before the trade deadline, or guys that people should get, you know, signings that are out there. You know, every, it's all speculate. It's all speculation. So let me speculate too, damn it. I can't speculate. I can't. Everybody else can, but I can't. Is that is that your take? Okay. I'm speculating. The Cowboys are not the team that likes to spend a whole bunch of money. Now, I will say that the Cowboys, from being in the cap situation they were, going by what used to be the way to do things, they're good to create cap space to maybe get rid of some guys that you weren't sure what the long-term prognosis is going to be. You know, people are mad still about Amari Cooper being let go and stuff. But do we believe that Amari Cooper is still going to continue to get better? Or have we seen the peak of Amari Cooper? I know he's still young, but we've now had the same scenario happen twice with Amari Cooper. From the Raiders, where he was playing really good, and all of a sudden kind of got lost. And I'm not trying to cheapen Amari Cooper like the Cowboys that had his shirts for $11. Yeah. You want Amari Cooper shirt? They're $11 right now at the start. No lie. No lie. I'm not trying to cheapen him as a player or his ability. 
But what if this is the pattern of Amari Cooper that by the fourth year kind of checks out? And you could feel like from the time he ended up having COVID that it was kind of like he had checked out. You know, here it was, you're going to basketball games when the team was trying to do a stretch run. It was kind of like whatever. But like I said, don't, don't shoot the messenger. So what if it ends up being that Amari Cooper isn't what we thought it is, that it was also partially the circumstances of the players that were around them? We'll, we'll find out if it's all Amari Cooper because they're not going to have Deshaun Watson for at least half of the season, maybe not the whole season. See how that works out. But anyway, be that as it may, what if the Cowboys, who have saved this $23 million, who could potentially save some more with the Dalton Schultz thing? Right? One rule of thought is well, they're just trying to roll that over for next year so they can take care of Diggs and um, CD Lamb even though there's going to be a boatload of money in the future. See, that's where I look at it and I keep trying to tell people the new money doesn't start until next year. The new money doesn't start until next year. And in the same way that people think that Dak Prescott, he's making too much money, um, Dak is only getting $19 million this year on the cap. To put that in perspective, why aren't we talking about Ryan Tannehill, who is twice that? at $39 million of our cap hit. Jared Goff is like 34 or 38, something like that. Or no, no, sorry, 32. Jared Goff is in the top eight of salary cap hits. We don't talk about that, they'll do it. In the same way where people will talk about Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott, you know, he's overpaid. Okay, I can understand your theory on that. If you're going to say Zeke Elliott is overpaid, why don't you say Christian McCaffrey is? Christian McCaffrey makes more per season than Zeke Elliott does. Zeke at least has played all the games the last two seasons since he's been paid. Christian McCaffrey, not so much. But be that as it may. We know the Joneses have more money and they know what to do with. Hell, they just got some mind this weekend. What if the Cowboys are like Glenn Close, laying in wait, waiting to strike? When you least expect it. They have money. And you don't need all of that for one guy. I believe that the Cowboys will, you know, look for some other players as we get closer to training camp. Because you know what happens in training camp. Some young guys start looking a lot better than the old guys. And a lot of veterans get cut that still are productive players. See, that's that third wave of free agency. And then there are, of course, some of those players that are disgruntled that you decide... Well, we can move them instead of paying them. Let's do that. So could the Cowboys be lying in wait, having their powder dry, having some cash, ready to make a big trade or a big move for somebody? Contrary to what other people believe, I think the Cowboys are a lot better team than they are given credit for. Because I look at where we were last year this time. Now, it could end up being that the Cowboys' defense ends up regressing. That's possible. But to think of what they talked about with the Washington football team's defense going into last year, and what they talked about the Cowboys, the Cowboys were a better defense. Than Washington. That's a fact. They didn't have all the all star players and the number one draft picks and everything that Washington had. They didn't have the returning, you know, rookie defensive player of the year or anything. Quite frankly, 
there weren't many pieces on that Dallas Cowboys defense that people looked at and said, I'd like to have that guy. Yet, they played great. And I think they'll be better from the fact that most of them ended the season healthy, like a D-Law who could actually work out and is not going to be able to pup list going to training camp. That we didn't have major injuries on it, and they've added some pieces with youth. You have some guys that had shortened seasons last year, like Nabel Gallimore, who could have a breakout season. You have guys who are on notice that it's it's it. I got to do something with Tristan Hill. And you have Micah Parsons, who seems to be hungry as could be, to take the step to the next level. So look at it from the standpoint of, we were hoping that we'd have a top 20 defense last year. We should have a top 10 defense again this year that could be playing even better. And as much as people will say, Mari Cooper, the Cowboys offense can't function without him. 865 yards is what we're talking about, guys, in production. I think the Cowboys, if they got another piece out there, or two, with the NFC losing so much talent to the AFC, a player or two could take the Cowboys over the top. It could be that Charles Haley, that Deion Sanders guy that just puts you head and shoulders above everybody else. And could it be that the Cowboys are looking at signing an old guy to a big contract to eat that up? That they're looking for the right young piece that they'll be able to keep for a while? I don't know if that's DK Metcalf because we know that the Seattle Seahawks are in a rebuilding mode. But it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me if they did make a big move like that. Maybe I'm crazy, but it must, it might just be a lunatic that you're looking for. So turn out the lights, don't try to change me. You may be wrong, but for all I know, you may be right. I will catch you guys a little later, get my fireside chat going. Fire pit hasn't been fired up since last Saturday. We need to do that. Hope you guys had a great Father's Day, and I will see you soon. Peace.